What's up, everybody? TCM here, back with another video. And I'm also here to tell you that your password probably sucks. And we're going to go over some passwords that I cracked in a recent engagement. And we're going to look at why even a 19 character password is not safe. So you're going to throw out all the rules of the things that you've heard about in the past of you got to have a capital letter, you got to have an, a special character, you've got to have a number and it's got to be X amount of letters long. And I'm going to show you why that's all wrong and how you should be creating passwords. So before we jump in the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. There are over 70% of you that are watching this channel that are not subscribed. And that hurts me, it hurts me in my soul. So please, please stop the pain and subscribe to this channel so that we can grow and make more great content. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So recently I was on an assessment where we were able to dump 7,500 password hashes. And out of those 7,500 password hashes, we were able to crack around 5,000 passwords. That's well over 50% and is pretty wild. And I wanted to share with you some of the lessons learned from that because I think a lot of people watching this content, even though you're security minded, you might think that a password is strong if it is 14 characters or 15 characters or hey, 19 characters as you see here. And that's not always the case. So out of the passwords that we cracked, the longest password we cracked was 19 characters. And you could see as it goes down the list, but what's the most common denominator here? Well, it's most likely that these passwords are using dictionary words. They're easily guessable. And why is that? Well, because we're thinking like a human. And so when we go to crack passwords, we're thinking like a human. And when we are told from a security perspective that, hey, the longer your password is, the better. Yes, that's true. If that password is very, very long and jumbled. Because when we say those kinds of statements, we're saying that from a brute force perspective, meaning that we're going to try every single letter, number, special character possible per character in that password. So as the password gets longer, then it becomes harder to brute force. But when we talk about guessing and using known password qualities like a capital letter in the front, as you see most of these are, and either a number or special character at the end, like almost all of these are, well, then we start thinking like a human and it becomes a lot easier to crack a 19 character password. Now, the other side of that would be brute forcing. We did apply brute forcing to these passwords and we did that to try to attack some of the passwords that were a little bit harder to guess. And as you can see, we took here all eight character possibilities. We brute force every single possibility for eight characters, and we were able to crack quite a few passwords. And these are all pretty jumbled with the exception of final here and maybe this Bob password and a couple others in here. But for the most part, these aren't easily guessed passwords. This actually took us about two days and my cracking rig has a 3090 graphics card, which is very strong when it comes to cracking passwords. Now there are even stronger cracking rigs out there. There are supercomputers that are capable nowadays, I believe, of cracking up to 14 character passwords via brute force. So knowing that, now the 14 character password policy, not that safe. And we can see that we can crack these kinds of passwords fairly easily on the eight character side. Now, as a normal person coming into nine character passwords over here, if I try to do this, it would take weeks, weeks. As you move up one character, you exponentially gain a ton of time. So that's where the 14 character, 15 character, really long passwords come into play again is with brute forcing. But we could start even guessing some of these passwords based on how people make passwords. So you can see again, even though that some of these are jumbled, we were able to create a rule set that said, hey, what if the first character was capitalized? And what if the last character was a special character? So for a lot of these, you could see that we were able to come through and just guess on that. And that eliminates a lot of time in the rule set because now we don't have to go and say, hey, first character is possibly any single character. No, we can say, no, first, 
character is going to be a capital letter. That eliminates a lot of possibilities. And then we just say, hey, last character is going to be a special character. Eliminates a lot of possibilities, reduces the time it takes to brute force with that type of rule set. So you can see that we can crack very long passwords. We can crack short, complex passwords. And we can even crack and guess even a little bit longer, but still short, complex passwords. Look at these. These aren't dictionary words. These people were doing, for the most part, a pretty decent job at having a somewhat decent password, but it just wasn't long enough with this complexity. So where do we meet the middle ground here? Where do we, how do we create a good password? Well, I've typed out a few different things here, and then we're going to talk about what I think is best practice for password creation. And here you can see this first password. I believe this is 14 something characters. I just slammed my fingers on the keyboard. I'm not entirely sure, but this would be a good password. I'm most likely not cracking this password if I came across this on an assessment because it's not human readable, it's not human predictable, and it's fairly complex. But the issue with this password, it is very difficult to remember. I'm not going to commit this to memory unless I really, really tried, and I don't have that much room in my brain to commit this kind of password to memory. So you could do something more like this, which is a very long password that adds complexity as well, but it's still memorable. Like I like long walks on the beach at around 5 p.m. This is not going to be cracked either. Fairly confident on that. So you add in some capital letters, you add in some uh, extra characters, whatever it is, pretty great. Now the common passwords that we see are dictionary words like pepperoni pizza 2021 exclamation. I'm definitely cracking that if it comes up on an assessment, hands down. But if you start mistyping them like pepperoni pizza 2021, you can remember that. That would be a password that probably wouldn't get cracked just because of the misspellings. We're looking for dictionary words as a as an attacker. So that would be OK. This one also down below where you start adding what's called leet speak into it with the numbers instead of letters that likely isn't going to get cracked either. But with this in mind, this really takes me to this comic that gets passed around the security space all the time. And we call this the correct horse battery staple. And what it's showing is, hey, you can come in here and create a complex password with capital letters and substitutions and numbers. But it's still pretty easy to guess depending on the length of this, as you saw with the eight and nine character passwords, we're still able to guess a lot of those. And it's hard to remember. Why do we want to do that to ourselves? Well, if we just take four random words, smash them together, it becomes incredibly hard to guess and pretty easy to remember. One of my good friends who owns a cybersecurity company, his password is 40 characters long. And all it is is just a long sentence. It's something that he can remember and is important to him. So it doesn't have to be this crazy complex password, though that does work. It can be something that is just a very long sentence that is easy for you to remember as well. But if you're going to use dictionary words, make sure that you're using a long enough sentence or a long enough password that it can't get cracked or guessed. Now, a great tool for managing passwords, and this is not sponsored, by the way, would be a password manager. And I'm showing Bitwarden because Bitwarden is open source, but there are tons of password managers out there. And what a password manager does is it allows you to create a vault. And in that vault, all you have to do is use a long, complex password, hopefully, to log into the vault. And then your account passwords are all stored within your vault. And they are long, randomly generated passwords that can be done within the app itself. It's fantastic. So all you have to do is log in and then you can grab your password. Now, I tell people, gun to my head, I could not tell you my bank account password, my credit card password, because I don't know them. They're randomly generated. They're stored in a password manager. All I have to do is remember the password manager's password. All right, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was informative for you. Hopefully now you understand that just because you have a long password doesn't mean that it's a great password. And just because you have a complex password doesn't mean that it can't be brute force. So hopefully now you are thinking about passwords a little bit differently. And if you were already doing this, good job. Pat on the back. You are a security rock star. But for those of you that are watching that didn't know that, go change your password. Go consider using a password manager and improve your overall security in life. 
So that's it for this video. Please again, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, my name is The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.